had this profound realization when I was driving in my car. I thought, here I am driving in the car, going so fast. You know, if I were to walk, it would take me so long to walk. Here I am in the car, and I'm moving so fast, and everything is happening on autopilot. I'm changing gears, I'm adjusting the acceleration, I'm adjusting the clutch, I'm adjusting the steering wheel, and I'm going as if though I am one with the car. I can even make a phone call, I can uh, you know, listen to music, I can chat to someone next to me, all at the same time while I'm driving. And it's almost like the car doesn't exist anymore. Is that I've forgotten that this is a car. It's only when it runs out of petrol or something like that, that I stop and say, oh right, I need to fill up. Otherwise my mind is wandering and I'm one with the car. And that's how I feel we've inherited the body. When we're children, we're still trying to figure it out. We're making funny noises. We, you know, shaking our hands in the air. We're just trying to find out how this body works. We're trying to navigate it. Uh, and that's exactly how we become convinced that we are our bodies. We even look at a child looking at the mirror for, for a start and it's like, who is that thing in the mirror? Is that me? And they're not even sure. They're almost like trying to move away from it, not recognizing that object. Because the child at that stage doesn't know that they are this body. And so over time, we start believing that this is our body and we are this body and nothing else. So much so that we don't realize that there was something in us that entered into a body and then we assimilated into this body. So we limit ourselves by what we think the body can do based on what we've seen in the past. Yet there's so much more that the body can do. They found now genes for immortality that exist within our DNA. They found genes that can make us fly. There's been some research done that says that within our DNA or within our past, there is a gene for flying. So of course, we're very limited by what we can do and what we can perceive. And we're so convinced that these are my limitations because we've owned the body. And the same thing with thoughts. As children, we have these wonderful thoughts and fantasies, and uh, you could call them delusions, but they're not, saying, I can do these things and I can do these other things. And we as adults say, no, you can't do that. That's not practical. And we train children to become, to believe in a conditioned mind. And so when we say, oh, I'd like to do this impossible thing, and we say, no, you can't, because we've limited our capacity through a conditioning. And the only way to uncondition ourselves is to realize that there is something within us that fits into the body, and it becomes like a, a spacesuit. We inhabit a spacesuit, but it's not who we are. And the same with our thoughts and our perceptions. They are just from our conditioning. Someone raised in a different environment, given different opportunities, have a diff has a different mindset. They engage with life differently. They believe they can do certain things. And someone from a limited background believes that they can't do certain things. And these are simply belief systems, but it's not who we are. And so we have to not buy in to this delusion that we are our bodies and we are our conditioned perceptions. Otherwise, it limits us in so many ways when we can do such extravagant, such extraordinary things. But what stops us is our conditioning. And what so stops us from understanding how much more our bodies can do is because we've been programmed in a certain way and saying this is all we can do, just the same way with the car. And if you look at what scientists have discovered with this thing called DNA, remember, if there was no name called DNA, DNA would not exist. It's because we've named it and we called it that and identified it in a laboratory. We've created this thing called DNA. But now what they've discovered is that only 2% of the DNA is known. There's 98% of this DNA, which they call junk DNA, that is carried along within us. So what does this junk DNA do? And why don't we investigate it? If you look at our range of frequencies that the eyes can see, it's a tiny range of the sounds that we can hear. It's a tiny range of the frequencies that we can pick up in nature, it's a tiny range. Yet there's this entire universe that exists outside of our perception and our limited faculties, yet we can't perceive it. So we have to understand how limited our perceptions are and how limited our knowledges are so that we don't buy into the delusion of limitation because limitation is simply a construct of the mind.